Hey, hey, what's up, good people? This is David Taub, co-creator of NextLevelGuitar.com. Hope all is well, and I hope your guitar journeys and musical journeys are going famously. And we have a real treat today, because today I have Jeff Edgers with us from the Washington Post. And uh, as you might have uh, read, or uh, as you might have seen from our videos, Jeff had uh, written a piece for the Washington Post on June 22, 2017, titled... The Slow Secret Death of the Six-String Electric Guitar and Why You Should Care. Um, While My Guitar Gently Weeps was the name of the piece. And this piece created quite a stir in the guitar and music community and lots of people put videos up about it. And although I didn't agree with a lot of the things that Jeff, conclusions that he drew from his article, it's a great topic for conversation. Um, because the truth is the electric guitar has waned in popularity from you know its heyday in the 80s and uh, uh, 70s and 80s, as well as the guitar is kind of becoming less and less in the forefront of popular, quote-unquote, popular music. So anyway, so Jeff did this piece, and, um, and um, uh, I'll put a link to that piece in the YouTube description box below. And by the way, a lot of the comments that were coming in about it, too, people were saying, well, Jeff probably doesn't play guitar, and maybe he's not that connected. But the fact is, he does play guitar. And in fact, he did a companion piece to the article, and that piece um, was titled, How Much Did This Guitar Story Cost Me? $2,376.99. And actually, that piece is a really good read, too. And I'll put a link to that piece in the YouTube description box below. Um, and that piece is about Jeff's journey, I think, over a year where he was writing this piece and his gear acquisition. So what happened basically was I did this response video. Then Jeff actually reached out and he emailed me and he sent me a very nice email saying, Hey, David, I really liked your uh, video. And hey, I wanted to clarify a couple things from the uh, from the piece. And, you know, I appreciate it. it's a great topic. And I appreciate Jeff reaching out. It was a very nice email. So I th thought I'd be like, hey, how about we do a couple minutes on Skype? We'll do a little chat. You can, you know, fill in the blanks of anything you didn't get. I didn't get in the piece you want to talk about. And again, we could continue the conversation and have some dialogue. So Jeff agreed. He's here with us today. And I want a big welcome uh, national arts reporter for The Washington Post, Jeff Edgers. Jeff, what's up? How you doing there? I'm I'm uh, I'm glad to be here. And uh, sorry, it took us a couple of weeks to get this together. But um, you know, who who wouldn't want to talk about guitars? You know, one of the things I wanted to ask you first was this 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 article created quite a stir, especially in the guitar music industry, the the guitar community, which are very very passionate folks. Um, did you did you think that this article uh, would get the kind of reaction it did? And were you prepared for that? Well, I think um, most of my stories are on the front of our Sunday section, and we try to really take great care and spend time on them. And it was a very lengthy story, and you know the design was quite wonderful. Our designers actually bought a, a, a squire and set it on fire in a controlled uh, fire, fire facility. So um, I knew it would get attention. You really don't know how much attention you're going to get. And, you know, frankly, we don't really uh, a lot of people think we like do, you know, oh, they're trying to sell subscriptions. But, you know, I don't get like extra money for when a story does well or doesn't do well. So I just was like really happy that it got um, got that much attention. I do tend to write stories about things that I consider to be passion subjects. So I think, you know, we're going to get into it. But I think a lot of the uh, reaction that was inspired by the piece is because we're talking about something that we people feel really strongly about and are really passionate about. And there are both sensitivities to that on the surface that we understand. And then there are things in our own minds that I think maybe we don't quite, quite grasp, like how hard it is to be a musician, how hard it is to like learn an instrument, how you're almost like an underdog in many ways. And then, um, and then to have a story like this come out, you kind of like start wondering, um, you know, a lot about the whole, the whole thing, I guess. But, you know, my main thing was I spent a long time on this story. We could have run a story that um, kind of looked at those numbers a year, year and a half ago. But I, I wrestled with it for a long time and went down many, many different roads trying to understand how to really, like, put some teeth into a subject that, you know, is both 
there are numbers, but there's also a, a sort of spiritual or like cultural side to it that is not scientific. And, and any time, in, in my experience, it seems when anyone writes an article about the death of anything, you know, the death of the novel, right? People aren't reading as uh, books, you know, it, it, it just stirs up all those emotions in, in, in people and especially with a title like the death of something that people are so passionate about. So you you actually worked on that piece for well over a year. I wrote a story about, um, we got a press release, must have been a couple of years ago, about an auction house selling what it claimed to be the Holy Grail, which was a Les Paul uh, that was being sold by a fellow who had worked, uh, you know, who had been like Les Paul's luthier. And um, it was kind of a breathless press release and a lot of places had just popped up you know, like a just took the press release as is and wrote, Holy Grail being sold. And I, I'm not an expert on guitars, but I am an expert on publicity. And I thought, I, before we write that, we should like check in with a few people. So I started calling people who I'd never met before in the guitar world. I looked on message boards. I called George Groon, the, you know, the, the dealer down in Nashville. Nashville right. I called uh, Tom Wheeler, you know, esteemed uh, writer of, um, uh, you know, and, and former, uh, editor, uh, you know, expert on guitars. I talked to all these people to get a sense of what was up with this guitar. And, you know, frankly, some of it is like total foreign territory. Like, I don't know about the, you know, different kind of like mechanics of guitars, to be honest with you. It's just not my my thing. Right. But um, but I was able to determine that this was not the quote unquote holy grail. There was a much more complicated and interesting story here. And we told that story in a Sunday uh, section piece that you can that you can look up. Um, that story led to my talking with different guitar folks and also being told about some of the issues in the guitar world. I mean, there's a figure that I don't know why this is totally dismissed by, um, by folks who are critical of that story, but it was eye opening to me. Um, you know, I, I'm not a businessman, but I know that in business you hear that like, oh, we've had a 2%, 3% growth, but not quite as good as we'd want it to be, but you know, at least it's growing a little, or things are relatively flat. What stunned me when I looked at the numbers of new electric guitars sold over time, uh, and this was compiled by Music Trades, which is considered an authority on that stuff, um, I'd seen this dramatic drop in sales over a 10 year period, you know, from about a million and a half electric, new electric guitars, a year to about a million. And I thought, well, what's behind that? And then I started thinking of my own perspective and what I listen to for music, what people listen to. And I thought, well, then maybe there's something there too. So I just started down that road. Now I didn't work for two years in this story every day, but I went, I went to the Martin factory in, 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 in Pennsylvania. I met twice in person with the CEO of Gibson. I got on the phone with the CEO of Fender. I went out to Nam in California. These might be like normal places for you guys to go, but <laughs> I am like an, I'm a generalist. You know, I do stories on movie stars and museums and, and art projects. And so like for me, I just kept building the story. I went to a school of rock to watch a bunch of kids. I, I, I did, um, I looked on YouTube at everything that was going on. I looked in my own record collection and like things really, you know, I, I really was trying to make sure that when we did this story, um, we, we did it right. And I know, I mean, I read comments, I see what they are. And I get in the comments too. I try to talk to people about them. And I think there's a little bit of a knee jerk reaction by people when they read the media now, you know, some people said, oh, that story was like a, um, you know, the headline was, uh, what, do, what do you call it when you try to suck people in to a story that doesn't deliver or something? Uh, um, I'm blanking on the word for it. But, you know, it's like almost a 3,000 word story. We really spent a lot and we, we, you know, we got Vernon Reed for some videos and we really spent a lot of time on it. So you might disagree with parts of it or have an argument, but I don't think we were trying to like dupe people into reading saying, uh, right. you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that from it at all. And I could tell from it, you know, it was something that again, it's a, it's a complex subject and there's a lot of different variables. And that was one of the things I talked about in my video. And, and you had brought up the point when you emailed me that, that it is complex and you only get, I don't remember the number that you told me X amount of uh, words for, for, for that piece. And it's hard to get everything in. So, so one of the things I wanted to mention, I wanted to ask you also, is that you mentioned to me in my email that there were a few things like, um, you used the word uh, a little bit of a lack of understanding on some of the things that you said. So, I basically, I just want to ask you, you know, well, what what did you want to say now as far as to help clear up some of what you thought are misconceptions that people might have gotten from reading it? Like you mentioned that thing about in your email about how that's not exactly what you meant about guitar heroes and whatnot. 
Well, I think there's one. So there are two things that aren't in that story that I'm not apologizing for it, but they're just a different story. Right. One is a lot of people complained about, hey, you're not talking about reverb and eBay and the aftermarket. The used you know, the, market, especially. Right. Well, yeah. It's just another it's just another story. I mean, it'd be like if we wrote a story on the auto industry and Ford and GM were having some huge issues, you know, we might write that story and not mention you know, the want ads or it's just it, it's just a different story. And I just couldn't get in that. And, it, it, you know, that was one piece. And then, as you said, people really fixated on oh, and the acoustic market. We didn't really get into that. I did a lot of research on it, but it just was a different ball game, And I just felt like it was it was not part of the story. Um, you know, I referenced it. I said what was happening with it, but I didn't get in. You know, I spent a long time in Martin. I talked to Chris Martin a while. I toured their facility. I had a lot of material. It's just it didn't fit what what we were doing. Um, so Guitar Heroes. It's interesting because people really fixated on that part of the story. Yeah. And they even they fixated it on to, to the point that they didn't mention, or they would bring up other things that were in the story, but they said we didn't have. You know. So they'd talk about like, the, you know, rap music, or they'd talk about like home recording studios, or they'd talk about drum machines. All stuff that was in there. It's just that. I think that we were very passionate about how we feel about Guitar Heroes. And I think one major misunderstanding people have is I was not saying that we don't have great guitarists. We certainly do. But there's a difference between someone who's a guitar hero, in my mind, uh, and uh, someone who is just a great guitarist. And I, the greatest example I think you can come up with is like Alan Holdsworth. I mean, that guy was an amazing, amazing guitarist. Uh, I, I'd say he was better than Jimmy Page. Can I say that? But I will. Um, I'm not sure anyone could argue that Alan Holdsworth sold more guitars than Jimmy Page. And that was kind of the point because people were like, oh, you don't know blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I mean, guitar uh, player just ran a really cool article on young guitar players, um, you know, showing people who these guitar players are. Um, it's not about whether they're good or not. I love Mark Rebo. He's like one of my favorite guitarists. I have no idea where he's going to go when he's playing, but, um, I don't think that if I went out on the street and asked 100 people about Mark Rebo, that even one would know who he is. Maybe one, maybe like someone in my family. But, you know, I, I think that that was the biggest issue because then people got really sensitive about it and, and, and you know, were complaining about, you know, uh, you know, about the fact that we had missed all these people. Well, I don't I don't think so. I, I think that there's something really special that happened when when uh, when, you know, people like Paige, uh, you know, uh, Beck and Clapton, but also Eddie Van Halen, and Neil Schoen and Joe Satriani and Steve. I can go on and on and on. When we talk about people in the last 10, 15 years, I can't go on and on and on. And it's not because they're not great. It's because they, those people don't exist, I think. It's not it's not in the forefront of the music and selling the kind of amount of records like Eddie Van Halen, like I was mentioning in my response, obviously, uh, you know, such a technical virtuoso player, but Van Halen sold a lot of records. You know, there are a lot of, a lot of, a lot of records. They were really in the forefront when, 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 when rock music was more, because guitar is, you know, the main instrument, in, or, or you know, usually out in the front of rock music per se. Um, in the '80s, when that was so popular, and now with the kind of waning of guitar in popular music, like I was saying, in a lot of popular music today, there's no guitar in it. The guitar solo is almost gone, and it's in popular music. It's a different that... world. I mean, it's it's hip hop. I mean, let's just remember this, and it's very important because it's a very pre precise date. But because I'm writing uh, about it now, um, you know, July Fourth, nineteen eighty six, when "Walk This Way," the Run DMC Aerosmith uh, version came out, or you know, Joe Tyler and Steve Perry version came out. That's the first time that hip hop was played on white rock radio. Until that point, it wasn't. That changed the world. So there's now a huge chunk, you know, starting at that point of 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 music that is really not guitar based. And I mean, Run DMC was one of the most guitar based hip hop groups you had, but it's not the same thing. I mean, Tribe Called Quest's last record had Jack White on it, but I I wouldn't argue that that's a guitar album, you know. So it's just a it's a different musical universe. And, you know, we talked about Guitar Heroes and the definition of them. And someone, you know, the Fender CEO mentioned Taylor Swift, which I thought was interesting uh, because we're not going to argue that Taylor Swift can play as well as um, Bonnie Raitt or Lita Ford or something, you know, right. or St. Vincent. But the idea that Taylor Swift was a, a very popular artist 
who held a guitar and and many girls wanted to emulate meant that she these folks believe sold lots of guitars so she would be a guitar hero in that definition now you know take that for what it is but guitar hero in my definition and and in the market's definition is it's it's like a business term more than a skill term if that makes sense yeah yeah, and it's and it's definitely it's definitely something because acoustic guitar sales are are up, and it seems more women are getting into playing the guitar. And you touched on this in your piece, and and Taylor Swift has had an influence on on uh, you know she's inspiring. Say what you want, like you said about her music, um, but she has inspired a lot of women, especially younger women, to pick up the guitar, and that's really cool. More and more women are getting into it. I didn't talk about that a lot because your piece was specifically seemed to me geared more toward electric guitar, though you touched on it in the article. But getting back to what you said about Van Halen and everything, yes, that's what I was trying to say. The world is kind of a different place that we live in today, and it's almost like this, which is kind of, again, another story. It's like we don't have that shared cultural music experience once MTV and the radio died, right? It's it's kind of different now. The world is different. And, and, and with the addition of all this music, EDM, the, and other music, vocally driven, effect laden music that charts in modern country. Um, there's just the guitar is just not taken. It's it's just not in that forefront anymore. Um, but does that mean the electric guitar is dying this death and it's going to you know be in a pile of ashes somewhere? I don't think so because there's still so much passion. There's so many people that not just play guitar but and, and the guitar related. Things and the used market, like you touched on before, the used, that's a huge piece of it. And this is a very complex issue. There's a lot. The used market is huge now, and you know sites like Reverb, eBay, um, people are really. I mean, a lot of people responded to that article too, saying, "I haven't bought a new guitar in 10, 15 years." That's all they're buying is used guitars. You know, I, I think that um, one point that wasn't really. Uh, highlighted, you know, in, in, with folks who were upset about that story. Um, I think that guitar players don't really understand how hard, I mean, we know, like, guitar players understand how it's hard to play an instrument, but I'm not sure that once you've learned to play it, like, I learned to play when I was a teenager, you know. Right. Uh, learned when I, 30 years ago, I learned to play guitar. And so there's a certain element of skill that I still have so I can pick it up and I can pluck, you know, chords out. And now I'm trying to teach myself how to play a different way. And I'm really practicing. Like, I just want to kind of get it back. But I don't think that people really understand or remember that first moment of time and how many hours you spent in your room with your, you know, fingers hurting. Right. And in, in comparison, I don't know if the, people think about how little, like, handmade stuff people still do like there's been a huge shift i think in uh, you know it's not just like garage band slash you know home music studios but it's in everything that we do and it's rare that people do a lot of hands-on things anymore and so i think that's been a major major problem major part of it you know i'm trying to get my kids to play an instrument and it's like they get to a wall where you really have to practice you really have to work on it and there are so many things competing for their time they don't totally want to you know it's like you can only excite them so much i mean i got my little guy who's seven i got him a little acoustic guitar he kind of fiddled around with it a little bit he wants to play my electric but his hands are too little and he can't like he needs to practice like i keep trying to explain that to him and it's just it's hard to get people self-motivated today i think you know i don't want to sound like a crotchety old man but i mean i do think there's something to how we've moved away from like hand you know crafts and ceramics and and, and things that you have to build yeah, yeah, and, and that's a good point. And there's clearly so many more distractions there today, and there's so much going on, you know, between whatever that grabs the attention of our of the younger kids, between cell phones and video games and all this other stuff out there that takes up their time. There, there does. I teach guitar. That's one of the things that we do at Next Level Guitar. We've been, and, um, yeah, I mean, I remember what it was like learning the guitar and how hard it was, and, and maybe I'm a little more in tune with that because I, I teach it and I see students you know, struggling with it as they learn, you know, almost daily. It's a challenging, challenging instrument for sure. And there, there is a big, steep learning curve. And once you get over the main learning curve, it, it gets a little easier once you could change chords and strum and once you're playing songs and having fun, but it's tough. So it, it, it is a tough instrument. But yeah, I, I agree. There does seem to be kind of less hands-on kind of in general, 
right? And that might be yeah. too. People want more, it seems, in our society, instant gratification, right? They want it now and guitar. Death, when we talk about death, we talk about death and dying. It's like, um, you know, it'd be nice if headlines were like 100 words long. Um, but, you know, to me, it's about whether you, you take this instrument, which was a central and, and primary part of American culture for 50, 60 years. And um, I mean, do we think that there will not, you know, people will stop playing electric guitars altogether and they'll be in a museum somewhere and someone will be like, hey, that's a guitar. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's the issue. The question is, you know, um, and, and Grun has spoken on this, I think, much better than I, I can. Uh, but, you know, the mandolin or the accordion or, you know, there were mandolin you know, bands. There were people who played clarinet obsessively and then rock and roll came. And, you know, my friend across the street, she plays a mandolin. I know plenty of mandolin players, but it's not a central part of our culture in the same way. So to me, the question is like, where does it bottom out? You know, what what ends up happening? You know, a lot of the people that are doing these YouTube videos and complaining about that story are uh, younger, but a lot of them are like, you know, I'm not calling you an old man, but I am an old man. You know, I remember the olden days and I just, you know, wonder what happens when uh, uh, we are gone. And, and, you know, are there the same people with the same passions behind who are who are picking it up? I, I don't know. You know, it's an unknown it's a, question. It's a great question. You know, it's a great question. I, I think it's I think it's cyclical. And I think, you know, obviously it hit a peak, you know, the electric guitar. You know, and and in in the '80s, '70s, and obviously now it has waned in popularity in music. But I think it's going to come back. I think, you know, um, I think someone is going to do something, you know, new and different, and and then it'll bring it back. Maybe, probably, maybe not to the peak that it was, but I think I think it will come back stronger. And and I don't think it's it's like you said, it's ever going to die. Is it ever going to be that forefront in our culture? Maybe not. Probably not. But when it comes to guitar sales, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know. I go to NAMM. I see more and more, you know, guitar companies, startups. I see more and more effect pedals. I see more, and, and, and it's just blown up in that regard. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, just because Ford isn't selling as many cars doesn't mean people aren't driving anymore, you know? I mean, I mean, and Gibson, yes, their sales are down, and Fender, you know, um, Gibson has diversified into many other things. Guitars only make up, you know, 30, 40% of their, of their uh, overall sales. But, you know, there's plenty of other companies. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's clearly... But those boutique builders, you know, I asked, because a lot of people were like, what about Sir? What about Ibanez? You know, like, not, not Ibanez is right. not a boutique builder. No, I know builder, what you mean. The, the... A lot of people, a lot of people complained and said, because I looked, you know, people would send me something and I'd look at the guitar maker and I'd go, wow, they make really cool guitars. That's interesting. I went and, and started trying to research those numbers, and there's such a blip on, 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 in the market that they don't register. They don't qualify to be listed amongst all the companies on music trade. So it doesn't mean that they're not important, and it doesn't mean what they're making isn't fantastic, but it does mean that they don't speak to the economic health of an industry. They just speak to making good guitars, if that makes sense. You know, Like yeah. I can't refute the premise of those numbers based on – somebody making good guitars right right yeah there's a lot of passion out there <laughs> a lot of yeah. passion i'm glad I, I hope you're wrong you know i hope you're right and i hope that you know our story is wrong in the end like it'd be great i mean how how amazing it would be that's what i don't understand like why like i i want people to care about this i want them to talk about it i think it's an important issue and uh so i you know i am I, you may sense it but i'm i like when people are arguing, right. I don't have a problem. I'm not a defensive person. Right. Um, I, I do find that some of the arguments I've seen, like, are um, they, they're just like sort of they're, they're not taking into account what that whole story was. Uh, some people just don't like the Washington Post. They're like, uh, oh, they're liberals, and you know, right. like there's some you know, there's a, like a whole bunch of Trump streams on there too, which was odd to me because I'm not a political being. I'm a national arts reporter, uh, but. You know, I just uh, I hope that uh, that in some way it's a, some ways it's a wake up call and that and, and that, you know, people uh, that this re industry recovers, really. You know, time will tell. You know, the world is a, is a different place than it was in the in the 80s and 70s and not even in, in the 2000. And music is evolving and changing. And, 
and uh, uh, culturally the way that music is is being presented and how we get it, be the, the internet or, or, or be the download of, of, as opposed to records. Although vinyl is making, has made a pretty good comeback. Um, a well, good vinyl, comeback. I'm, a, there's a, I'm a vinyl person. I like listening to vinyl and digital. That's the only ways I listen. I take, cause I like, you know, sometimes going running or taking it with me, but right. I love vinyl. And yes, vinyl is growing more than any other area of the music industry, but it's still a blip. It's still minor compared to what uh, it ever was and what mainstream music is selling. It's so small. So I hope that it, look, I hope everybody picks up record players. My kid has a record player. He listens to that stuff, but it's still just a, it's still not, it's not changing the, the narrative, I guess. Right. And look, I just, you know, I'm taking, uh, I've been buying online lessons and learning how to play finger picking old blues style, which I never could play before. And uh, it's really a wonderful convenience that didn't exist in the, in when I was taking lessons in the eighties, when my mom had to drive me up this huge long hill and then I'd go and meet with my teacher and he'd yell at me for not practicing the right thing or practicing the Allman Brothers solo when I was supposed to be doing the Steely Dan, you know, yeah. like love having that online lesson, which I purchased so that. If I don't have time to do the thing that day, I could just do like 10 minutes of it and I can just practice until I've got that part and then I can go back to it. It's really helpful, you know, it's a, and it's a new way of learning. Did we miss anything? Did you want to mention anything else? No, I just, you know, um, I hope people uh, go read the story again or read it for the first time. And, uh, you know, as you can tell, I'm very accessible. I like I like talking about guitars and uh, I appreciate, you know, I, I wrote to you because I appreciated uh, your uh, passion and uh you know reasoned response and like you disagreed with you know parts of it but it's fine with me yeah i mean we had the we had the fender ceo disagreeing with me i put it in the article he yeah. still disagrees with me you know so um i i like um uh you know it, it's easy to get one side of something i think what we strive to do when when we do good stories is try to get all you know as many perspectives as we can and try to really understand something um, and, and I appreciate and, that. I appreciate you. Yeah. I appreciate you making yourself available and, and to dig deeper into this. Because, like you said, you know, it's tough coming, arguing, and making comments when you don't have the whole side or the whole story, or there's misconceptions. And that's why having this dialogue is such a good thing. And that's why YouTube is so great as a vehicle for this and dialogue. And you know, we can disagree. Uh, someone else can disagree, and that's fine. But everyone can put their thoughts forward and, 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 and talk about it. And, uh, and I appreciate you because I know sometimes people get very defensive. You know what I mean? And I think what is surprising to me is that sometimes some of the criticism doesn't uh, uh, take into account the idea that I wouldn't just make up numbers or something. And like, I have way more, you know, we talk about acoustic guitars. I could tell you that um, while they're up overall and while they're selling more than electric guitars, I know that over the last, you know, year, uh, Marden and Taylor have had to reduce um, work days and cut production. I could give you the pinpoint number on that sucker, you know? Like, it's not just taking a, a dart and throwing it at a board and saying, hey, I think I'll write about that today. So I'm surprised people don't have a little bit more faith. You know, the Washington Post is a big newspaper that really takes facts seriously. And I'm surprised that people think that, you know, we don't do that kind of research. You might disagree with with our articles, but we're not going to uh, just we, we don't, um, you know, quote numbers or, you know, do that without really having those numbers in hand. I went back and back and back to music trades. Uh, Brian, Brian Majeski, who's there, fantastic, intelligent resource. I went to him. You could ask him. I mean, I went to him maybe like six times over a year, just kept going back. Is this reasonable? Is this not reasonable? Is this language right? I really wanted to make sure that we got it right, you know, because um, it's important. I mean, it's it, it's an important subject. It needs to be treated as such. Awesome. That's that's I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, again, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Jeff Eggers. National Arts Reporter for the Washington Post. I'm David Taub with Next Level Guitar. Please subscribe to the channel. And also, I'll put in the, you just look in the description box below. I'll put the original article from the Washington Post, Jeff Eggers' follow up piece. If you didn't watch my response video, you might want to watch that for the backstory on uh, my thoughts on all of this. You can uh, watch that below. Jeff, anything else you want to plug? No, I just got to go practice, you know? There you go. Get that guitar out and start working on your licks, brother. 
Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Okay.